thrilled to talk to you. I'm 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 such a fan. I'm Jason, by the way, and that's Jimmy. Thank you. Um, such nice a fan you. of your work. I mean, from you know the toys that made us. I mean, I I never thought anybody. Any serious filmmaker would actually make a documentary series. I mean, w one episode, let alone a, a series about various toy lines. But not only did you do it, but it, you did it. It was like a big success. It was one of those those COVID uh, binge shows that you had to you had to watch. Thank you, man. Very kind. Very kind. And uh, so we how know you, that you're a, you, you're a fan, you're a collector, and you know you're 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 one of us. I I, I think the word geek is overused. I, I'm not a big fan of that, but I, you know you're you're an enthusiast. Um, but you you yeah, kind of I mean, listen, if you don't want to be called a geek, that's cool, and I respect that. But I am uh, absolutely a motherfucking geek. <laughs> <laughs> am I allowed to curse? You're allowed to curse, man. Anything okay. anything you want. Yeah, that's I'm right. Geek. I'm definitely a geek, and I'm proud of it. But I respect if you don't want to be called that. I will not call you a geek. No, I think it's just over you sometimes. That's all. But uh, that's true. We're geeking out about icons unearthed. I mean, an anthology documentary series about the making of Star Wars episodes one through six, or should we say four, five, six, one, two, three? And as a huge Star Wars fan, and we'll we'll talk about your fandom in a little bit. Uh, I just, I I can't imagine you going and pitching something new about the making of star Wars and not seeing eyes roll like, Oh my gosh, hasn't every story been told about the making of these films. So how did you get people excited about something new when it comes to, you know, documenting the, the making of probably the most well-documented films of all time. So, I mean, uh, you asked me a, a direct question. I'm going to give you a direct answer, but I, I mean, I, I hate saying this kind of thing because uh, I always feel like it, Hello? Yeah, still Did here. We we're here. No, no, no. We're oh, oh, we're just we're it. we're shifting camera angles. Um, oh, okay, cool. Uh, yes, like, oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, any any kind uh, of direction you want to give us is fine. Uh, if, if, yeah, let if me you want it. <laughs> <laughs> You're the expert here, man. Perfect. Perfect. I'll get my uh, monocle next time. Um, so I hate this answer because I always I mean it could come off as egotistical. But you asked a question, I'm going to give you an answer. Um, movies that made us in particular, um, like many times we'll hear, wait, who are you? And we're like, well, we do movies that made us and toys. And they're like, oh, my God, movies that made us. It's my favorite show. When, when can <laughs> I do my interview? So it's, we get a lot of that, luckily. And then the other answer is, because obviously we did this kind of thing, before movies that made us, um, you just got to be passionate, dig in, be respectful, but be passionate and uh, maybe don't accept the first no you hear. Second no will never bother anyone again, but <laughs> you got to be, be polite, but you also have to be persistent. Did you have an angle though? Did you go in and say, I think we've got a different angle on this particular story? So there's... There's the before we got Marsha Lucas, and there's the after we got Marsha Lucas. Uh, before Marsha Lucas, it was, please trust us, please trust us. Uh, and after Marsha Lucas, it was, they, we got Marsha. And they were yeah. like, what? Bullshit. We're like, no, here's a picture. They're like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I'll do it. Like, Howard Kazanjian, I don't know if he does the show without her. So mm -hmm. as one example. Interesting. Wow. And she was most recently featured in his book. And that was probably the most we've ever heard Marsha Lucas talk about Star Wars prior to Icons on Unearthed. But of course, this was all transcribed onto a page and we're not seeing her on camera actually hearing the words come out of her mouth. But was exactly. it through Kazanjian that you were able to nab Marsha? Uh, what was the evolution of you no. getting her to sit down in front of camera? It, it was, believe it or not, it was through Ken Ralston. Um, oh, he, uh, I he interviewed him before. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. we had interviewed him before a few times for other shows. And uh, after the interview, he's literally like taking his mic off. And by the way, what I'm describing to you, I mean, this happens a lot more than you may think. Um, yeah, he's taking his mic off and he's like, who are you trying to get? And we were like, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> 
And he's like, mm-hmm. well, who are you talking to? And we're like, we gave him the names. And he was like, no, 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 you got to go through her assistant. And he gave us her assistant's name and number. Took about two weeks of back and forth. And then it's funny. I woke up one morning and I was supposed to be flying to New York at three o'clock. And I got an email saying that she had said yes. And she was, and she's in Hawaii and she was available quote tomorrow and for the next nine days. Wow. And in this line of business with someone like her, yeah, you don't fuck around with the nine days part. <laughs> no, no. I my trip to New York. And at two o'clock, I mean, that was like 30 meetings and crap that had to be rescheduled and pushed back six weeks. Literally flew to Hawaii at two o'clock and I was in her house uh, about about 18 hours after I landed. For wow. six hours, by the way, six hour interview. Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is her first on-camera interview and only her second interview ever about Star Wars in 45 years, right? Uh, as far as we can, I hate w- saying absolutes with stuff like that because then yeah. someone will be like, you know, in 1982, <laughs> um, but according to her and according to staggering amounts of Googling, because I don't want to get that 1982 comment, um, mm. yes, this was her first ever on camera interview. Wow. Kudos to you, man, because that, that was a real get, as you know, a real get. I, not to be cheesy, but I really feel compelled to respond to you by saying uh, I am part of a team. Obviously, doing interviews like this would be hard to do with everybody sitting here together. So I'm the face of that team, but uh, we don't get her without that team. Yeah. What do you think the biggest roadblock is for people who have attempted to interview her in the past? Is it George? Is it something? Did she ever have no. an agreement with George not to talk? What's the deal? No, abs- no, absolutely not. Um, listen, I can't speak for probably thousands of other filmmakers, but if I had to guess, and this is only a guess, you know, you know, we have a full-time research team. We have a full-time casting team. Like we have resources that, you know, a guy or a girl working out of their garage or, you know, I don't care if it's a $10 million house, uh, the garage is st- like, there's only so much you can do as an independent. Hmm. So because we have full-time people doing certain jobs for us, you have resources that not everybody has. Makes sense. I think I'm. I think I'm beginning to follow you a little bit here, <laughs> because I, I thought your resource was Ken Ralston, but it sounds like there was maybe a little something to uh, sweeten the deal. No, we didn't pay her a penny. No. Okay. All right. All right. So you got a good Love research it. crew, and you got Ken Ralston giving you uh, the tips. But I mean, somebody had to have been able to get to Marsha Lucas over all of these years, and she's been resistant to appear on camera. So I was just wondering if there was ever any reason given why this is her first on-screen interview. I'll be completely honest with you. I did ask her that. Yeah. But I don't remember what she said. No. (laughs) I'm 99.9% sure. Listen, dude, it was a six hour interview. Yeah. And Uh, you were there, right? You were there. uh, You're the director of the series. Were you there? You were the one asking the questions. I was sitting, uh, literally sitting six feet away from her. Yeah. Yeah. In her house. Does she have any Star Wars stuff in the house? Nothing. Not one. Not even a poster, huh? Yeah. By the way, this I do remember. I asked her that. And, uh, you know, she has a couple houses. Uh, and she, I said to her, and I, I asked her that. I go, there's nothing Star Wars here. Do you have any Star Wars anywhere? And she says she has one of the original posters framed, uh, and I believe she said her L.A. house. And that's it. Wow. Well, Brian, we've only been able to see the the first three episodes of of six episodes in the uh, in the series. 
Uh, we've already been treated to a lot of cool stories that we've never heard, despite being total, you know, geeks uh, on this sort of thing and watching all these documentaries and, and reading all these books and through the magazines. What do you think, though, you know, having met the woman, what do you think is her biggest contribution to to Star Wars, Marsha Lucas? I think, and, and again, I could spend t an hour answering this question, but if I were to reduce it to one simple answer, I think that the way the script was written, the movie was directed, and the editing was being done, had she, she humanized everything. Like, I think it was her that made someone like, you know, I was like, I mean, I was one when the movie came out, but, you know, I got into it when I was five. Mm -hmm. Like, I wanted to be Luke Skywalker because to me, he seemed real. Like, I wanted to join the rebellion because of him. And Leia, of course, and Han. Right. But she, she made them real. And if you don't mind a spoiler alert, um, in Return of the Jedi, you know, she was not very involved with it uh, but for a bunch of reasons, including the fact that the marriage was starting to end. But they were about to lock the cut and they knew it wasn't really working. Hmm. And they gave it to Marsha. And I'm taking this answer and I'm applying it to A New Hope as much as I am Return of the Jedi. What she told us she did was, and she used this as one example, Mark Hamill was directed to be angry the whole movie. Like Markad didn't get the characters. So Markad is like angry, angry, angry. So he turned in this performance basically that was not the Luke Skywalker we grew up with. And she watched the cut. She instantly under, uh, realized that. So it's interesting, all the people who had worked on it for years before her, didn't see that hmm. she saw it and then she basically locked herself in an editing bay for a week and went through every single take wow. mark hamill did and found the softest take and when he wow. started even getting angry in a soft take she would cut to yoda or she would cut to vader and literally hid the misdirecting that Marcad had done. So wow. I'm using that as an example, but I think that applies to A New Hope as well. As you know, because you've seen the episode, the force was about to be cut out. Yeah. In fact, the force was cut out. She put it back in. So I mean, think about what Star Wars is without the force. It's like any other science fiction action movie. And that the was- force uh Brian De Palma that was writing George so hard after that screening about the force, right? He, he, gets, he gets the most bad rap for that, but it was pretty much everybody <laughs> but Spielberg. Yeah. yeah. And so Marsha, Marsha was the one who like was sitting there watching the cut and was like, if we're making this movie, let's make this movie. Like it doesn't matter if Brian De Palma don't get it. Yeah. And the example she, Used, which I think is in the episode, you know, one of the problems with making shows like this is you're watching a thousand cuts and then you like <laughs> every cut gets shorter and you kind of forget what made it in or not. But I'm pretty sure this is in the episode where like the, the thing that made her the most upset was when Han, right before they go on the final battle, Han's line, may the force be with you. Think about Han Solo's character without that moment. Yep. Because mm -hmm. I never did until she brought it up. Without that moment, Han Solo is the exact same person at the end of the movie that he was at the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. line shows him evolving. Yes. And subconsciously, that's what we as movie viewers want to see.